trustees with a trust fund. Please join us, gentlemen. Welcome. Grab a chair. There's more chairs up here if you want. You can never tell which one's going to be more comfortable. I would Usually like to uh, start off by introducing once again our fellow trustees. We have four out of five, one who's out of town uh, attending a family matter. Steve Falzone, Bill Hartley, John Troiano, and I'm Norman Soberty. I'd first like to make a comment before we get into uh, discussion of Mackinson and the SEC. Early part of uh, last year, Mr. Bean uh, reviewed the financial statements of the town of Hampton and read them to the public. I remember listening to it and was going through the balance sheet and mentioned the $18, $20 million that is in the trust fund. And then subsequently we were informed in March of an intent to uh, put a warrant article forth to borrow funds from the, from the um, trust funds to support various spending initiatives for the town. <clears throat> and then um, we had further conversations where we've come in here and met with you. And when that discussion was brought forth, we indicated that we would not, we're not supporting that because basically borrowing from the trust fund and paying us interest is paying and giving it back to you is really an interest-free loan. And then paying back any principal would lose as a result of time value of money, the principal amount would be reduced substantially. And that the town, in our opinion, could borrow <coughs> money on a, its own basis and use these assets which are very strong in helping Hampton's balance sheets to the point where it should be able to borrow money at a very low and reasonable rate for its capital requirements. And we suggested continuing to have the funds remain as, there, as they are generating approximately $700,000 of income for the town for use <coughs> as the town sees fit. Uh, subsequently, uh, we had another meeting as a result of decline in the value of the portfolio. And Mr. Bean led the charge on this part with the town wanting because of its fiduciary responsibilities and being responsible for the assets of the, of the overall assets of the town uh, to request additional information on a monthly basis that we would submit to you. And about a month after our meeting, which was in July, we received from Christy Poem a, a list of questions which we then proceeded to uh, answer to you. And then we proceeded to provide you and continue to do at, at this date uh, monthly reports on the financial condition of the trust funds. After one of the reports was received, Mr. Bean was very exercised and outraged over the decline in the value of the portfolio and wanted to have a special session, uh, non-public, to discuss the uh, bloodbath, as it was uh, described. And uh, although we were not invited initially, we were then invited and uh, I wouldn't attend a non-public session. If there's anything to be said regarding the trust funds, I felt it should be out in the open and no reason to uh, discuss that uh, in any way that the public is not aware. And we continue um, to, during that, that meeting, apparently Mr. Bean brought a newspaper article and start ranting and raving about my role Mr. As Chairman, a representative of the point of order, ranting yeah. and raving, uh, this needs to stop with yeah. the personal. I, I, I don't think most of this is, has to do with what we're here with tonight. <laughs> I, we're here tonight please, to gain some, um, I don't think most of this has to do what we're here with tonight. We're here tonight to gain some, um, yeah, some I, information. I, okay, I am going to start with Mr. Welch, who's going to well, start. The I, conversation. I'd like to finish my comments. <laughs> okay. okay, and the, the point was and continues to be I have a role as a spokesman for the rational taxpayers. Of, of Hampton, which is a nonprofit corporation set up in the state of New Hampshire to provide 
uh, information to the public about tax issues that we think are important. When I come here and I speak to you as the chair of the trustees of the trust fund, my relationship with the rational taxpayers is off the table. It is not something I bring up. I do not make any statements about it. When I've made statements, I've done it in uh, public comments or written articles about it. it well, you're bringing not be it up right it. now. So okay. I, as far as I'm All concerned, right. you can just drop it. All right. And let's, let's, we'll start with Mr. Welch here but tonight. Le let me continue my statement. On September 2nd, while we had received a letter from, from uh, as a result of your special meeting, we received a letter from Mr. Welch, which is a result of your, your uh, direction telling us basically to liquidate the portfolio and get rid of all equities. Okay, wait and a minute. For, I, for I don't think this is even happening, what you're saying. I don't even think what you're saying has any truth to it. We're here to gather well, information tonight, and uh, let's just stop it right now, and let's start with Mr. Welch well, to discuss I, what I, we I, are here tonight to discuss. All right, I'm You're getting, bringing I'm, up I'm, stuff. You're making things look like they aren't. Well, and I think you just are. need to drop it. But they We're are. here to get information tonight, and we will we will uh, discuss I'm, the information that we want to get. My conversation is leading up to that well, point. Well, you're you're during painting a picture here that, that I don't even know. Okay, during the middle. So I don't like it, Mr. Silberdeck. Okay, well I presume. So we are here to discuss. We're going to okay. ask Mr. Welch to start this conversation. If you want to talk, you should have got up and talked during public comment. Well, um, this, as far as I'm concerned, I, I feel I have, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> and Mr. Silberdeck. All right. We have invited the trustees here this evening to clarify a situation. To get information. To get information. And we are not only talking to uh, individuals, we are talking to elected trustees. And this I want is to not hear, a hostile. Shut me up. You're always shutting no, everybody up. Mrs. Wolseley, this is not a hostile meeting. Well, it certainly is now. With okay, your we are going. I am running this in this meeting. You are not. I we am, are going to start with Mr. Welch. Well, it seems to this, me that since we've invited we these gentlemen here, we are going to find out information. We're not first. here to hear about. Uh, and then we'll have given We are not here to hear about the yellow sheet, or whatever it's called, the <laughs> Rational Taxpayers Excuse of Hampton. Me, but that's we not a are, pointed Mrs. issue. These Mrs. are elected Wolseley. officials. Mrs. Wolseley, These I am running this officials. meeting. Yes, Mr. Wonderful. Welch, would you please start? Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> gentlemen, uh, the Board of Selectmen, as was characterized a few moments ago, instructed me to send a letter to the Board of Trustees asking you if you would please join them for a meeting this evening so that you may discuss uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission's <laughs> orders with regards to Mackinson and Company and Warren J. Mackinson uh, regarding the investments of town funds which they are the overseers or the agents for the, the trustees. Um, the Securities and Exchange Commission issued an order recently uh, that in fact um, talked about at one, at one point in their order about um, fraud. It also indicated that there was a serious uh, fine that was levied against both the company and the principal that I just mentioned, and the Board of Selectmen wanted to uh, talk to you this evening and get your input into what was going on so that they could, they could consider this matter further if they need to. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I think I should turn this over to Council, who is probably a lot more knowledgeable of the baseline than I am after, after having read the Commission's information. Yes, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Welch sent you in behalf of the Selectmen. Uh, Right to know law request uh, requesting emails that uh, or any communications concerning the SEC proceedings. Any and all communications, including electronic or email communications among the trustees of the trust funds, whether as a group or singly, whether replied to or not, concerning the SEC proceedings and order dated September 3, 2015 in Administrative Proceeding File 3-16780, and also any and all communications, including electronic or email communications, between the trustees of the trust funds, whether as a group or singly, and whether replied to or not, and Mackinson and Company, Inc., or Warren Mackinson, concerning the SEC proceedings. Um, on Friday, uh, Mr. Welch was provided with a packet of information uh, to Fred, uh, 
from Mr. Silberdick, but copying uh, the other four trustees. And uh, these is this now complete to the best of your to knowledge? Best of our, uh, my knowledge, that's all the information we have. All of, is that true for all of you? Yeah. I didn't know whether or not you had a chance to review this yes. before it was submitted. Uh, the first email in here is an email from David Mays to the trustees informing them of an SEC uh, proceedings. And uh, is that the first knowledge any of you have had that there was an investigation by the SEC into Mackinson and Company and Warren Mackinson? Yes. That's, That's the very no. first? Pardon? No. Okay. Can you tell me what was he the first? He had called me uh, in the midst of the uh, request by the town for uh, suggestions and ideas, and we were trying to uh, prepare a response. And he said, I just want to let you know this because it's probably not coming at a great time and proceeded to tell me uh, the situation with the fact that the SEC had done an audit and there was going to be, they had found improprieties with their advertising material that sent to other municipalities and et cetera. And there would be a fine of approximately 100000 They hadn't, the ruling hadn't come out yet. And I said, would you please advise the other trustees in writing, I don't want to pass messages, just send everybody an individual email, which he did. And he would be David Mays? David Mays. Uh, Mr. Mays is currently the uh, President and Chief Investment Officer of Wet Warren of Mackinson and Company? That's correct. Yes. So uh, how long before this email of September 2 did, was that communication? To Probably you, a day Sorry. before or two, something like that, very close to that time. Uh, at, uh, what else did he say to you regarding the nature of the investigation? Well, that basically he went through what they did that was wrong with regard to their advertising uh, material they sent out, which is articulated in, in the SEC findings. And then subsequently I had a conversation with him and I said, are you involved personally with this promotional program? Did you have anything to do with the advertising material that went out and the answer was no. He did not have anything to do with it. He had suggested a different approach with different materials and it was rejected by Mr. Mackinson and Mr. Mackinson and proceeded to do what he wanted to do is trying to run his business in the best way he thought he knew how. And that was the uh, beginning and end of it. David, this happened after David bought the business, the audit by the SEC took place in 2012. I think it was a few months after we acquired the business. Um, the subsequent conversation you had, I didn't see that in the, in the was, emails. It was, it was not an email. It was a phone conversation. When was that? It was a few days ago. I just want to make doubly sure that we had, that he was not in, involved with any of this personally. A few days before tonight, you mean? Yeah. Did you uh, come to have any understanding of how long Mackinson and Company had been under an uh, investigation? Uh, other than the fact uh, that he said it started in 2012, I had it was news to me. And uh, when when did he say that that it started in 2012? Um, when I spoke with him the first time. That's when they the indicate gave me a little bit of background in the history. Of uh, did you pass that information along to the trustees about the fact that this had been uh, going since 2012? Uh, I did not because it wasn't information that I told him to write to the trustees and explain what was happening. I didn't get on either write an email to the trustees or engage in any phone conversations with the trustees. I asked him to do it. I don't want to pass messages and not have all the facts correct because I forgot something. So we have this email from David Mays to you and the other trustees of September 2 where he informs you of an audit conducted by the SEC at the end of 2012. Uh, beyond what appears in this email, was there any further uh, description uh, to you orally or otherwise about what was involved? No, other than the next day, he said the ruling came. He sent another email, I think, on the 3rd of September, indicating that he had that they had received the uh, 
the ruling and it was posted and where we can go to get it to look at it. And so what did the trustees do in response to this uh, settlement we issue? We did nothing until we met. October 19th. October 19th we met. So uh, did the trustees uh, have communication regarding this particular no, SEC? No. No, either orally or in writing? No. Nope, didn't say a word to any of these gentlemen, and no one called me or said anything or did anything until we met on the 19th. Uh, what efforts did any of you make to follow up on the information that was provided by Mr. Mays in his email of September 2 and September 3? Mr. Tryon? So actually, um, I, we didn't, I didn't discuss anything until October, you know, when we had our meeting. And at the meeting, I uh, did make it clear how angry I was about the situation. Mr. Hartley? Maybe I can give a little background. I'm a friend of Warren Mackinson. Uh, we met in 1992 when we both passed the CFP exam at the same time. And we decided to form a uh, New Hampshire chapter of the fee-only uh, financial planning group in New Hampshire. We had about six or seven people and uh, uh, so I've been acquainted with him for a very long time. He's, he's a very unusual uh, uh, planner in the sense that uh, everything he does is laid out ahead of time, step by step by step <coughs> by step. He's the type of personality that when he goes to uh, take his family skiing, he goes <coughs> to the back hall and he pulls out a list of all the things they have to bring on a ski trip and he conducts his business the same way. Uh, whenever he reads an article about something that he doesn't know much about, he files it away. And then when some client brings that topic to his attention, he has it in his file. So he's very methodical in what he does. And he's, he's very conscious about compliance. His firm tries to comply with every single rule that he knows about. In fact, he has a compliance manual. Uh, and, and um, so that if, if, if there's ever a ruling to be done, he, he pulls out his compliance manual to take care of it. I was very surprised to see in the, in the report that his manual didn't cover this advertising because it's not like Warren not to have it already laid out in, in, in uh, uh, black and white. Uh, and there's no question in my mind that the, the error that he made in sending out the, this advertising to uh, prospective clients was his. It wasn't his firm, it was him. Uh, and what, what he, he did that was incorrect was he presented to them that uh, if they invested in according to his model portfolio, that they would have made profits in the past much greater than what they had invested in on their own. And the mistake he made was not saying in those advertising that this was hypothetical. That's what the SEC objected to. And th this um, complaint by the SEC was the result of a routine audit. Anybody who's a financial advisor, uh, myself included, we get audited either by the SEC, if we're big enough, or by the state of New Hampshire, if we're smaller. And, and, um, so as a routine uh, uh, method, they go through all of the communications that we have with our clients to make sure we haven't overstated things. And obviously, when they came across this advertising that Warren had sent out to prospective clients, they questioned him about where, where did these numbers come from? And, and when he, he said he back-tested it, and he back-tested it what meant that he didn't have actual earnings equal to those numbers. <coughs> and as I say, I've known Warren for a long time. It's not like him to do something like that, but obviously he did. And I haven't spoken to him about this, but I was very surprised to see that he got picked up on this type of a thing. So the question and was, once you learned from Mr. Mays' communications that Mackinson and Company was the subject of, S of an SEC audit, and further that there had been this order censuring Mackinson and Company in Mackinson. What did you as a trustee do to look I, I into didn't, it? I didn't know about the audit until I got the September 3rd 
uh, uh, decision. Uh, once you learned about that, what did you do about it? I read it and I, un I understood exactly what, what had happened. And I also knew that, that none of those uh, statements were ever made to us as Hampton um, uh, trustees. They were made to other towns that he was trying to solicit. But uh, we had already hired Warren way before that. And so none of those things were, were done to Hampton. So I didn't consider that was an important thing for us. Uh, Mr. Falzone. Uh, I got the email. I went to the SEC website, read the order, and I was unable to attend the meeting on the 19th. But That's my question was, for, for now, what did you do yourself once you learned about this uh, from Mr. Mays's emails and the attachments? What did you do about looking into what he was telling you about? There was no communication other than my reading the, my personal re personally reading the SEC order. I didn't communicate with anybody. Well, you did. You did send a, uh, an email to David asking about the New Ham whether New Hampshire securities. Uh, You're right. I forgot about that. Yeah. And he indicated because under his the assets under management are greater than 125 million, it would be managed by the uh, the SEC, not the state of New Hampshire. Other than that, anything anything no. else you undertook? Uh, Mr. Silberdick, did you follow up on those two emails of September 2 and September 3 from Mr. Mays in any particular way to look into no. it? The next communication was on September 25th when myself and all the other trustees received a packet in the mail which include a copy of the SEC uh, ruling, the ADV as it's referred to, and you have a copy of that, and a a new Mackinson and Company brochure which uh, discloses their um, investigation with the SEC and their and their um, uh, censure on that. settlement settlement. So, Mr. Silberdick, that this uh, disclosure you were just indicating to me, the one from Mackinson and Company, September 25th. Right. of which you provided a copy, seems to have been addressed to you. It doesn't indicate it was sent to the individual trustees, was it? Was it sent to each of you individually? I, I don't recall. So. No? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hartley? I don't recall. Mr. Falzone? Can you ask me that question again? This letter that was sent out by Mackinson and Company. On the 2nd? No, the 25th of uh, September, as Mr. Silberg just mentioned. I don't recall. Okay, do you recall seeing, ever seeing this uh, firm brochure, which is uh, 2A of the, of the uh, form ADV? Yes. When did you see that, Mr. Hart? I don't know when. Probably uh, uh, around the 2nd of uh, se September when everything else came. Mr. No. Triano? No, I never saw that. No? Does that uh, change your memory at all, Mr. Falzone? I don't recall. It could be in the packet that came from uh, David. Uh, what discussions did any of you have among yourselves prior to meeting on the subject on October 19th uh, in response to this mailing of September 25, 2015? None. None? None. Well, I, I did. I want to make sure it was on the agenda. With the trustees? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, the agenda was was uh, prepared for the October 19th meeting? Right, and it wasn't included, and I contacted David and said I want to make that the first item of business. And was that specifically listed on an agenda that was no, posted? No, but it became the first item of business after, so, the, after proving the minutes. That was our first item. So in preparation for this is meet the meeting of October 19th? Yes. In preparation for that meeting, was there a posted agenda that listed this as an item that was going to be discussed? No. So, um, Mr. Silberdick, did any of the rest, well, I'll ask you first, did any of the rest of you have any communications with Mr. Mays prior to the meeting of October 19, 2015? No. No. Just my question about the state of New Hampshire. That was it. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Silberdick, I believe you had some communication, however, with Mr. Mays, is that right? Prior to the meeting with October 19? 
Not really, other than, than whatever uh, you have there and running. I didn't have any call with him. I just want to make sure it was on the agenda. And I believe you indicated to Mr. Mays in an email October 8th that you provided, uh, David, I want this issue behind us, and I think we should not eliminate its discussion at the trustees' meeting of the 19th, right. maybe treat it as other business. Is that your yeah. communication? Yeah, if it wasn't on the agenda, uh, but I made it the first item on the agenda. I also just would like to uh, indicate I invited the Board of Selectmen to attend the meeting on the 19th because we were going to meet with you later that evening. Uh, was uh, the meeting of October 19th, uh, the one that we're referring to now, uh, this was a public meeting that was held in this room? That's correct. At 4 o'clock? Yep. Uh, who was in attendance at that meeting? The trustees. With the exception of? Except me. Of Steve, right. Uh, Joan <coughs> Rice. And that was it. And was Mr. Mays there at all? Mr. Mays was there, and Mr. Stokes was there, and Warren Mackinson was there. Okay, and Mr. Stokes was whom? He's, he works for uh, Warren as a... For David. Uh, David. Works for David. Uh, sorry, he works, works for David, for David as, a, as an analyst. Uh, other than that meeting, was the issue of reaffirming the relationship with uh, Mackinson and company brought up at any other uh, meeting? No. And was that the sole meeting where that issue was discussed? That's the only meeting we've had. Uh, there was no other meeting called to discuss that particular issue? Nope. Uh, so there was no investigation by any of you into the substance of the proceedings involving the SEC other than reviewing the materials sent by Mr. Mays? Correct. That's right? Yes. Uh, do any of you have any relationships uh, business-wise with Mackinson and company personally? No. No. No? Nope. Uh, I know Mr. Uh, Sovich isn't here. To your knowledge, does he? To my knowledge, he doesn't either or with uh, any such relationship business-wise with Mr. Mackinson himself? No. 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 At your meeting, uh, you had a meeting on October 19th at 4 o'clock, and then you had a meeting with the Board of Selectmen at 7? Yes. Is that right? Uh, did you make any effort whatsoever to communicate to the Board of Selectmen what uh, that this issue was uh, being discussed? No. Did you make any effort to tell the Board of Selectmen that this decision to reaffirm the relationship with Mr. Mackinson had, uh, with, sorry, with Mackinson and company had occurred? No. I figured it would come out in the minutes. I'd see it. Did you feel that the issue of the, uh, what was ordered by the SEC in the September 3, 2015 was a matter of concern for you as trustees? Mr. Mr. Troiano, I believe you in the minutes reflect that you had some discussion about uh, whether or not this, this involved uh, any of the individuals still employed by Mackinson and company. Is that correct? Yeah, in, in re retrospect, I, 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 again, I had some concerns you know, um, I guess in retrospect about it, um, seeing you know what was involved, the nature of it. Um, if you want me to elaborate, I can. Yes, please. <laughs> right, let me give you a little background. Um, I guess first of all, yeah, I, I've been an advisor for 31 years. I've also been a licensed branch manager for 25 years, so I'm very <coughs> familiar with the regu regulatory environment here. Um, you know, the way I came about being a trustee, uh, I guess. For the most part, I'm, I stay behind the curtain. I'm glad you all have names here because it's my <laughs> third time in 20 years that I've been to one of these selectmen's meetings, okay? But, you know, back in uh, 2011, you know, I was following what was going on with the conflict of interest and being familiar with regulations. I was reading about this in the Hampton Union. I thought it was kind of absurd. So yeah, I wrote a couple of letters that I guess got people's attention. So anyway, when um, Dave Hamilton resigned, um, I got a call in my office from, I don't remember who, but one of the selectmen asking me if I'd be interested in taking a spot. 
Um, I declined because, uh, you know, I said I like staying behind the curtain. Uh, the very next day I got a note, another phone call from another individual. It was after that phone call I realized that uh, maybe I should be on here just to keep an eye on things. So I just uh, said that's how I got appointed to being a uh, trustee anyway. Um, I got to say the, um, obviously, initially, you know, I, I was concerned with, um, you know, at one of our first meetings I had to point out to Warren that, you know, he, he can't be disclosing, using us and his marketing without written permission, so I did have to bring that to his attention. But really over the last several years, guys, so from an investment point of view, things have gone fine. So again, anyone who debates investments, I say put that to rest, the accounts have done fine, okay. Um, with this issue, like I said, I was very mad because number one, I felt we should have, this, this investigation has been going on for probably a couple of years, okay. Um, I felt we should have been known that this was going on. I mean, I know how audits work, okay. Um, the audit was probably you know, back in 2012, and that's when they discovered this issue, and then it's been negotiating. Um, who knows what the original penalty was, you keep on 100,000 is this settlement amount. Um, I, I, and that's what part of our meeting on the 20, the, when we reaffirmed, I, I said, well, I want to put in there that we, um, in the future, if there is anything, that they notify us immediately. I did not like the fact that this was being kept quiet for a couple of years, and I did say, how does this make us look? You know, that this has been going on, we didn't know about this. Um, now, we did reaffirm Mackinson and company as the advisor. Now, but I reaffirmed David Mays, okay? Um, David Mays, to me, is a very honest individual, does, does a good job. Um, in retrospect, I think we should have waited a bit till we I could do and I discuss it more because I guess my concerns <coughs> were is Warren still being compensated at all from gaining business from us? Um, in my opinion, if he is being compensated, then we should revisit this issue because we should not be rewarding bad behavior. Okay, if he if he was generating business through marketing, um, you know, taking shortcuts, that's an issue. The other thing that bothered me was that um, when I was reading that, I guess Warren acted as his own compliance officer. Now, to me, that's kind of absurd, okay? You know, being your own compliance officer, what do you do, look in a mirror and say, oh, you can't be, couldn't be doing this? Um, so I really feel that there should be an independent compliance officer with any company that we're working with here. Um, so anyway, but going forward, I guess I think David Mays has done a good job. Um, they, they do a lot of work for the amount they get paid. Um, I think it's, um, I don't want to hold it against, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I commented that, uh, uh, so David, David Mays should do what I call an AirTran, okay, and what that is, if, you know, years ago, there's a plane that crashed in the Everglades, Value Jet, what they did, they changed the name to AirTran so it wouldn't be associated with a plane crash. <laughs> I think Mackinson and Company should become Mays and Company, you don't want to be associated with a plane crash. Anyway, that's my comments. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Mackinson appears to have uh, retired in June of this year, is that right, to your knowledge? Um, to my knowledge, yeah. Yeah. Do you know, for your, for, to the point you've been making, whether or not he still has any financial interest from the business of Mackinson and Company? That I, I don't know, and I'd like to know that. Yes, I think we would too. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know whether or not the uh, particular investments that uh, Mackinson and Company makes for the trustees, um, Mr. Mackinson still has any interest in that by virtue of the National Advisors Trust? Uh, that that I'm not aware of either. If he's getting any compensation on that, and are any of the rest of you aware? I don't believe he does. I'm not aware. I don't. I will say that in the. David indicated, because I said, is Warren paying the penalty? And he said, we have an obligation to pay him. I don't know what the terms were of the purchase and sale of the business. And whether that there's a balance due him as part of the purchase price, my understanding that will be deducted from it. But that's all, I don't know any more than that. If I, if I may, Mr. Uh, Gerald, just to perhaps refresh your memory, I, I know I did uh, uh, read in the uh, requested information that you provided, uh, Mr. Silverdick, that uh, Mr. Mays did uh, write that uh, 
there is an income stream to uh, Mr. Mackinson, and that somehow is being worked out on this fine. And that is in the information that uh, Attorney Gerald requested from you. And I did read that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking now. I'll bring it up later. But there is an income stream, obviously, if you're going to be negotiating payment of that penalty. Thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Troiano, I know you had sent an email to Mr. Welch, which indicated that uh, rest assured, if Mr. Mackinson was still tied to the company in any way, there would have been some trustees who would not have reaffirmed that relationship. Is that right? Yes. And I guess you would have been one of them? Exactly right. And I guess there are others as well. I, can, I can't speak for the others. But, yeah. Are any of the rest of you concerned about that, if there is a continuing uh, relation tie between Warren Mackinson and Mackinson and Company? Would no, that no, concern no, no, any no, of you no. of, of, in terms of continuing your relationship? I am. Mr. Silverdick? Um, I would need to know what that relationship is. If it's, if it's part of a purchase price balance that's owed him versus getting royalties or some other commission or something, I need to know that. Tori. Mr. Hartley. Hartley judge. No problem. All right. So uh, I guess that question still needs to be asked of Mackinson and company, though, whether there is a royalty stream or whether there is some payment still to be made and, and for what reason. Isn't that right? Still needs to be asked. Yes. Mr. Hartley, still needs to be asked. I don't, I don't think it needs to be asked. That's a private uh, transaction between Mr. Mays and Mr. Mackinson. I don't think it has anything to do with the trustees. Mr. Silverdick, that's still to be asked, isn't it? Well, we, could, we can ask it, but I don't think it's going to affect um, our, our relationship was with David Mays and the other four people that I understand work in that firm who are who are servicing Hampton investments and I, I will ask it but I'm I would be pretty sure there's some financial obligation between David Mays and Warren Mackinson to pay for his ownership but and I don't Mr. Th Mr. Uh, Gerald and, and, and just to uh, um, David Mays emailed you, Mr. Silberdick, on October 8th at 9.42 a.m. and to quote uh, virtually identically to what I'm reading, the company is paying the fine to ensure compliance, but the payments are being offset against certain obligations the firm has to warrant stemming from the company sale. So there right. is, in fact, a, uh, an income stream. And There's Mr. A, probably Mackinson a purchase is price uh, enjoying an income stream from the firm. Yeah, that's like, um, Thank you. Are you finished? Uh, just a few more. Um, in terms of the uh, of Mr. Mays's involvement, how many employees do you understand that uh, Max and Company has? Managerial employees. I think he and Stephen are Steve Stokes are the the two principals of the firm. And I I don't know anything about Stephen's equity ownership. I doubt he has. I think David owns 100 percent of the company. Stephen's an executive with it. Jared Brock is an analyst and. There are two ladies working in the office, Linda and Carol, as far as I know. Does anybody else? I'm not aware of it. Sounds like five. That sounds like five to me, and I think it was in their firm material. They described their personnel and their qualifications. Now, uh, Mr. Mays, as I understand it uh, from their website, has been associated with the Mackinac and Company since 2008. Does that sound right? Yes. Yeah. And so uh, have you, since you have been trustees, each of you, has he been the person you've seen more of than Warren Mackinson? Yes. Yeah, he's been the one who's been doing the, the actual uh, trading and the investments for the trustees. And has that been the case since uh, 2011 when the trustees hired Mackinson after the competitive yeah. process? Yeah. D D Warren was always the front person presenting the agendas, and he would give the present to anything that would involve the technical issues of the investments or review, planning strategy. It was always David who would take 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 control of that conversation. When you did the competitive process of selection of the investment advisor after the AG's office had its proceedings, uh, did uh, Mr. Mays present the the bid, so-called? No, it was it was it was Mr. Mackinson presented the bid. He was he was there, but he was Mackinson did all the presentation. Mr. Mays was there. Yeah, and so uh, you had I believe narrowed it down to some eight firms back in 2011 to interview. 
Right. And you conducted an interview with Mackinson and Company and others. Yes. Yes. And they gave you the presentation uh, that ultimately you agreed to s select. Correct. And uh, that's the one where Mr. Mays was there as well. Yes. To my recollection, he was. That's what I have so far. Okay. And um, I just want to say again that this is not a hostile meeting. We're only here to gather some information, and we're expecting to find out some more information later on in the week. Um, one of the problems I have right now is I, uh, for both Mrs. Wolseley and Mr. Uh, Silberdick to make me look like I'm against you is absolutely not true. I'm fully supportive of the supervisors of the trust fund. I don't, <clears throat> nobody here has decided about the warrant articles yet. And, you know, I, so to sit there and act like that we're doing that when it hasn't been decided, I have a problem with that. Um, the only problem that I basically have with what's happened so far is why wasn't it passed on to us, particularly when you all, you know, everyone knew it before. And really, I have a problem with I don't understand why the FCC doesn't have a better way of um, letting people know something like this when there were 29 towns in New Hampshire that had a problem. And uh, when you read how some of the other pro people or uh, towns like Bennington um, are reacting, many of the, it seems, you know, it seems like a lot of people are reacting to this. And, uh, you know, I just want to say and clear the air here that I am supportive of the trust fund and always have been. And I'm happy with the results. Today didn't look so good, but it's not always going to look good. And now we're going to start with <coughs> questions. Mr. Bridal. No, I think it's, uh, we, we've all had concerns. Uh, and and uh, no. I hate to use the word transparency as that gets thrown around a lot. But that, when, when you met with us, we didn't hear anything about it. And all of a sudden, we, we get this, this, uh, this ruling back, and we know nothing about it. And it seems, you know, $100,000 is pretty strong. A sanction is pretty strong. Uh, but we all know that that was a negotiated plea or a negotiated settlement. Um, so obviously, it had been going on since a lot longer than than September 3rd, and it, it seems like you guys weren't even notified of it, and that's concerning. Uh, so um, it, it, it's not against the trustees, you know, but I think it would have been helpful if we had known about that on the 19th when we met. It might have been a little bit better uh, for us to find it and then have it come to us. I think uh, that's very concerning. It's concerning for the other 29 towns that, that are doing it, and we, we've heard from some of them. So uh, again, uh, I, I appreciate you guys coming here. Thank you guys for coming here. Um, and we'll continue to look forward. So. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. I agree with Mr. Troiano changing the name to Value Jet or something. Might be, <laughs> might be a very uh, good thing. I, I have just one question for you to this point in time. Has the town of Hampton suffered any monetary losses or inconveniences or problems as a result of the SEC ruling? No, no. no. Mr. Bean? Yeah, I do. Uh, Mr. Silverdick, thanks for the opening salvo. Uh, the Mananuk Ledger transcript um, headlines, uh, it was this week. Um, trust fund manager under federal scrutiny. Bennington, I thought it was in New Hampshire. I guess it's in Vermont. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, no, it's New Hampshire. It is New Hampshire? Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm only concerned about Hampton. And uh, a selectman, Steve Osiensky. Is quoted here in the paper. I remember all the charts and data that he presented to us, whoever it was from Atkinson, and apparently, uh, quote again, quote, it was all a lie. Uh, I didn't even know where Bennington is. Uh, they don't listen to me. I don't know who they are. So, um, if you're defending Mackinson Company and Bennington, don't attack me. Um, just deal with the facts. Uh, this has been a, a ongoing 
issue. Uh, I'm reading Hampton Union headlines from 2011, Hampton trustees to oust Mackinson as fund manager. This is updated January 31st, 2011. Mr. Mackinson is um, a board member. He's a bookkeeper. Uh, he's sustained. It's, uh, he's the investment manager of the fund. So at one point, you voted to oust Mr. Mackinson. Uh, is it, this is well before an SEC uh, no. uh, event. This is well before uh, willfully engaging in any transaction practice or course which operates as a fraud or deceit, which the Mackinson Company and Mr. Mackinson uh, have both uh, negotiated a plea with. This uh, ousting vote that you voted on in 2011, Mr. Silberdick, was before 2064, which uh, any practice, of course, of business which is fraudulent, deceptive, or manipulative. We're far down the road from there. Again, uh, this is the Hampton Union article from 2011. Uh, Ann Edwards, director of the AG's tri tri charitable trust unit, has had to recommend and do some work for your board, Mr. Silberdick, and telling you how to run it, that uh, Mackinson resign or remove his company as the registered investment advisor. And I'm not making this up. I wasn't a selectman then in 2011. Uh, and I had no idea about this until this information was foisted upon us uh, by an unknown addressee in a letter to me that I immediately reported to the town manager. Uh, she had previously ruled, and we're talking about Mr. Triano, so rightfully, income streams, that uh, Mr. Mackinson has several companies, Pearl Tracker, and I'll get to that, uh, and he is a, uh, an owner of the National Advisors Trust. She proved, proved uh, the Attorney General's office had previously ruled that Mackinson may not be charging the town for services, but the National Advisors Trust Company does charge the town an estimated $10,000 annually for its services. And Mackinson has disclosed that he is a founder of the company and a charter shareholder of National Advisor Holdings, the parent company of National Advisors Trust Company. She also found that he receives an additional uh, benefit of overseeing the trust because he can use it in promotional materials to help market his firm. And not only did he use the fact that he did business with your, your board, Mr. Soberdick, he engaged in fraud, he engaged in deceit, and he manipulated the data. And he used data that didn't exist, and he used models that didn't exist. And he did that on top of the federal government greasing the slide for Wall Street to the tunes of trillions of dollars of bailouts to big That's companies. So I'm, I'm continuing on, Mr. I'm, I'm continuing me. on. Why don't I'm you stick with what I'm, you're I'm talking about? I'm continuing on because this is your board that is being yeah. written here, and it's your vote, Mr. Silberdeck. Okay, and Mr. Mr. Uh, Mackinson talks about his background and his education. And then we go on to the most recent Friday, November 6th, Hampton Union. And you're saying that you made, and, and, and perhaps you were misquoted, but that you took the vote at its October meeting to show support for Mackinson and company. And perhaps you're misquoted, but if you're not, you're here to support the citizens of Hampton, not corporations that do business under these types of ramifications. Well, again, so if you were misquoted, that's fine. Words here. But if you're not, well, I'm reading, so if you're misquoted, that's fine. Um, the Attorney General's office is involved with this. There's 29 other towns that are, that are going through this. And when you ask, and you ask if the town of Hampton has suffered any loss, we have a town to run. You have a trust fund to run. And it doesn't appear to be going very well. We're trying to run a town. Town manager, the town attorney, everybody else is paid by the town. And we're concentrating on your committee. And we have been for five years. And it is costing us money. It's costing us our reputation. Well, that's okay. my answer to that. You can I, so can I interject I... a bit here for a second? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Um, let's save us all time. We should not even be talking about performance of the investments. What happened here had nothing, not. to, okay, but nothing to do with the investments at all. And I can tell you from someone who manages a lot more than Mackinson and Company, for what the, the accounts have done over the last several years, for the objectives that we, we, we were looking to achieve, the accounts have performed fine. So I, I just listen, uh, let's that's not fine. talk about Th Thank you very much, and I'm not talking about the performance, as I say. Uh, you can't make money in, in this market with what's been done. Um, you can't make money at all. 
You've got uh, your, your emails that have been responded to. Uh, ProTracker is a, a company that Mr. Mackinson owns, or ditto. Uh, it is uh, choose the best practice management software. You can look this up online. Are you familiar that he owned a company called ProTracker? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. One of the highlights that he talks about, and you talked about how drilled down and dedicated he is to, to practices. In his company, ProTracker, uh, simplify, simplify your compliance task without cutting corners. Well, I think some corners were cut. Uh, it goes on, regulator, regulatory requirements have never been greater. This is from his own company that he runs concurrently you know, with. You, you keep, uh, making, me, you keep Chairman, making these allegations Mr. that are baseless. Mr. Chairman, it was about please. advertising, not about protractor or about accounting software. Regulatory, and this no, this is, is a regulatory the speak. requirement. Listen, we're going to let everyone here have okay. their say. Regulatory but requirements, this is from... But we are, I do want to make it clear, we're not here to talk about the, re, uh, the way the fund is working. We're here to talk about these other issues. And everyone, I want everyone to have their say. And then again, for, Mr. for Mr. Mackinson's company, he advertises that his firm does regulatory requirements have never been greater, client notice, written policies and procedures, and document reviews. That's his company, ProTracker. So um, it, uh, it, can, it continues to boggle my mind what's going on here. It continues to boggle my mind. Uh, Performance advertising and the right way to attract capital and benefit investors. Focion Investments, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it. The Securities and Exchange Commission, and again, ProTracker knows it. Anybody in the business knows it. Mr. Triano knows it. It is when you're talking to people, you have to be right on and you have to have the most integrity in the world. The Security and Exchange Commission focuses considerable attention on performance advertising and conducts vigorous enforcement actions when it perceives misleading or inappropriate advertising practices. The table below presents certain enforcement actions by SE-related performance. Well, who is the first one that's on the list? It's the firm that invests with your board of trustees. Performance adv advertising is viewed as the output or deliverable to clients. The output, however, is de derived by the inputs that produce the performance returns the inputs by Mays, or not Mays, Mackinson and MCI were fraudulent and in violation of SEC law. We're not talking about market performance here. So there's a, a sister company that Mr. Mackinson owns. Regarding your initial comments, uh, this has nothing to do with market performance. This has nothing to do with the Rational Taxpayers Association. This has nothing to do with the emails that you've sent about different. This has to deal with the law. This has to deal with full transparency and that our citizens know what's going on with their money. You, Mr. Silberduck, would demand nothing less from this board, and I have seen you call people out on this. Exact thing standing right there. And I'm talking about a placeholder by Finance Director Mike Swotzer and Vicky Lassard, and not a dime changed hands. And I saw it and I observed it. What does that have to do with to do what with, we're talking about? It has about. to do with transparency. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I know this is uh, up in, again, and I'm sure the Attorney General is delighted to see it again, but uh, this is up in Concord. It's over my pay grade. I'll have nothing more to say about this issue. And uh, Mr. Chairman, it's back to you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. For, Waddell. Thank you. I'll just be brief. I just got a couple of things. Number one, I, I, I'm not certified anything financial, and I don't have a compliance manual. But I absolutely know 100% that when they send out a perspective, it has to be 100% true, or it has to state that this is not a, a, an actual thing. So I mean, number one, it was false advertising, and it should have been known, no matter what. That's not. A, I'm not going to accept anything saying it was a mistake could not have been a mistake. If it was a mistake, the person should not have been in charge. But beyond that, the only other thing I have is, while this audit was going on, if we're trusting this company, why didn't they let you guys know it was going on? So those are the two main issues that I have. That, or, or one other issue, too, that number one, it was fraud, absolute fraud. It should have, it was known that it had to be known that it was fraud. And the SEC thinks that also. Number two, when the audit was going on, because you did have a large amount of money. Now, he handles, what, about $135 million or something? 165 
okay, so 20 million, you must be a fairly large client of his. So you should have been informed that this audit was going on, and if you weren't, then to me, whether it's Mays or Mackinson or whoever it is, my trust in that company, no matter how the portfolio did, no matter how well it did, my trust in that company would be diminished. And I would think that that should have been something that should have been brought up to us and should have been brought up to the public. That transparency, again, is very important. And we're having a problem here, and we're having a problem with trust with the person who has $20 million of our money. Why didn't they come and tell us there was an audit going on? Why didn't they tell us there may be a problem? This, to me, and those are the only two issues, those are the only three issues I have that that should have been done. And, and to me, I just don't see why there are other companies that can do just as well. And that if there's been questions with this company prior to this, there are questions now, why not just move it to somebody different? Why not just, or, or at least give the, a, a very good explanation to the public on why you're not moving it and why with these not only allegations, but settlements, why you believe you can still trust this company. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And I just want to say that I was here when there was a problem with Warren Mackelson Company before, and it was very unpleasant. And if any of these people, because I don't think anyone here was there, they would all be more uncomfortable than they are today. Because this seems like deja vu, which I knew about this back at the end of September. I knew about it when you came in the last time because I someone had tipped me off and you know brought it to my attention, but they did not bring the letter like Phil had it. And I kept thinking to myself, well, maybe they're um, you know have got it mixed up from what happened before or whatever. And you know, for me, it was just hearsay because I didn't see the paper and uh, more importantly to me, I was afraid to ask the question because I wanted to ask the question when you were here about this, but I was afraid and I didn't really know the legal implications if I was allowed to mention someone's name like that and I didn't want to take a chance of ruining someone's mm -hmm. reputation just like we would not want to ruin any of your reputations of any of you in any way. And that's why I didn't ask more about it. And um, I did actually bring it up a few times, but I don't think people really understood what I was talking about. And I really didn't know either because I hadn't seen the letter. And when Phil sent the letter around, I thought, wow, it's taken all this time. And I realize now that all of you knew about it all that time. Um, and I, that's really the only problem I have is why we weren't let know, you know, let, why we didn't have that information so that we could support you. Uh, especially now that it's all over New Hampshire to 29 other. Oh, Rick, uh, in all, um, I guess, I guess it depends on, um, I don't know what the procedure is to let you guys know. I just I think, know. you know, you see it in the minutes and then they would take it from there. In other words, I, I, you ought to know like at the meeting that you come up there. And but I don't think like, we really saw it in the minutes. Uh, at least I didn't. Uh, and that's another one of the problems that I have. Although I might be wrong here, but I, I guess that your minutes aren't on the town website. They're on the trustees' website. I know. I don't understand why they're not on the website, <clears throat> though. That's something that the people that are here in Hampton would like to have your meeting. I, I'm pretty I sure if you asked anyone. Rick, I, I found them just, I found them pretty fast. They're on the library's website. Yeah. yeah not on the town website. Yeah, I did find them pretty fast, but I just would... Myself, I would feel better if they were on the website. I thought that there's a link between the town website and the trustees that allow you to go to the trustees website and it was mm -hmm. it was plainly there if you, through the link. Yeah. And secondly, I want to indicate again, we invited you, I sent it in writing. I know, but you know what? We get invited to a lot of places and we didn't go there because we wanted you to come here. Okay. And tell us the information and you didn't tell us the information. N not but that's that, okay. All right. Our I, now, now this, this is how we're dealing with it now. Okay. But we did have you come, and we did purposely. Did, at least I, I, I believe we none of us went because we knew you were coming here. Right. Right. Um, I was gonna say, you know, they, you know, they did have to send out a letter to all of their clients letting them know about the SEC order. 
So I guess the question is, well, because the trustees aren't his clients, it's the town that's his client, right? Wouldn't it? No? Where, where are his clients? We are. Oh. oh, okay. All right. Never mind. All right. So, yeah, so well, that, you know, <laughs> it's, is it, it's just, it's, you know, again, what's been said here, all we ever hear about is transparency. Well, this is the least transparent mm -hmm. thing that I've seen in a long time. But I don't blame, I'm not unhappy with any of what happens there at the trust fund. I want to make sure to say that again. Uh, I do feel that how will the voters look at this? You know, they, uh, uh, I think a lot of them are going to look at it like the way that Mr. Waddell just expressed his views. And that's a problem, and that's the problem that you guys have. We're not questioning, you know, we're, we want to wait. We, we want to wait for a week or two to see what's happening in these other towns. And then I assume that we would like you to reconsider your vote to keep Warren Mackelson company. Well, we, at our meeting on the 19th, when we had the discussion about this in front of the trustees, our relationship is really with David Mays, Steve Stokes, and the other people in the organization. And yes, I agree with what you said, Jim. I think we were... Uh, we were all taken back that we were not informed that an investigation was going on. There's, that's inexcusable. We should have been informed by Warren when he was still at the firm. We should have been informed by David. And whatever reason, it's inexcusable. That being said, however, we, the, we were never impacted by any advertising to make our decision to hire them as our investment advisors. Their performance has been stellar. The information that we received from them is timely, it's accurate. There's, they literally have done a great job for this town. And were we one of the first people that he had or did he have a, a we were, portfolio we were the of first, towns? We were the, and this is what led to the, <clears throat> all the issues in 2010. He, when we terminated the prior advisor and he said, I'll do this for free and I'll do the bookkeeping, I'll do the advising, etc. The conflict of interest, which was brought out by the prior board, was over the fact that he was going to use this for his promotional purposes of trying to solicit other business and using Hampton as the stepping stone to do that. And we were all invited. I remember Bill was on the board at the time, and I were invited up to um, Concord and met with the AG's office and discussed what our opinions were regarding the uh, Mackinson and company and their conflict of interest and you're correct in what you said before Mr. B I was one and I really had an issue with the conflict of interest it was just inexcusable he resigned he left he didn't he didn't run again for office and then he wanted to submit a bid for uh, for investment advisor and if not correct he they won three uh, the, the board voted three to two to name Mackinson and Company investment advisor, they were at least 20% of the price it would have cost us with anybody else. And we already had experience, not with Warren, who was, although he was the, the titular front man, we were dealing with David Mays, who was making the investment decisions, and we had a very good and have a very good rapport. He has done a very good job. He's well respected in the community. This is certainly, this whole event has not helped uh, his role and the Mackinson and Company name, I think, has a big smear on it, and he's going to have to deal with it. And the, your, the idea of AirTran to something else is something that he has to consider for their professional reputation. But they are professional. They are very uh, uh, cost from a cost benefit wise. They're they're a very good price for the town of Hampton. What we would have to pay anybody else. And uh, when we had our meeting and what we looked at was, were we impacted? Do we make our decision based on anything, any conduct, any advertising, any promotion? The answer was no. We had made our decisions based upon a historical knowledge of working with, with David and crew. And that led to our viewing this situation as one between Warren who committed this violation with the SEC and Warren having to deal, David owning the business, David having to pay it, but Warren effectively is going to be 
uh, reimbursing me either through a reduction or purchase price or whatever way they have their business relationship. And we felt comfortable that in reaffirming our relationship because they've done a very good professional job. And we're not out to destroy a small businessman who's doing a uh, very good job with a very fine professional team because we have no reason to do that. And when we didn't, we came here to discuss your suggestions and ideas of what we should do with the portfolio and the conversation took a different vent so we were in and out of here in 10 minutes other than that i didn't personally didn't think it was material to discuss i know it may sound like oh a hundred thousand all fine it's not with david mays it's with warren mackinson and we can separate our relationship between david and the firm unfortunately he has to live with it that's across the i remember the when this happened before uh, or when there was an issue with the Warren Mackelson company before, it went on for a long time, yeah. and Mr. Mackelson didn't go very easily. He was, it took a lot to get him to leave well, and to resign. I, I was there then. I remember that and, and, also. And Warren, he was a trustee. Mm -hmm. And he, he, was, he was also doing the, uh, in, in, uh, the bookkeeping for us. Uh, we had an outside advisor, a bank, um, that wasn't doing that good a job, but the uh, issue came up as to whether you could be an advisor and be a trustee. And the attorney general uh, had meetings. We all went, and they decided no, you can't be both. It's a conflict of interest. So Warren had to make a choice. He's, he's either going to be an, an advisor or he's going to be a trustee. He chose to resign as trustee, and and then he made a bid to be the advisor with the seven other companies that we interviewed. And, and when we uh, in interviewed them all, um, a lot of them were very, very good. Uh, so some of them we didn't think were that good, but most of them were very good. And um, the cost was a big factor. Uh, Warren did it for 20% of what any other firm would do it for, and less than what we were paying the bank. And, and plus, uh, we were experienced with Warren's investment uh, strategy. He was very conservative, and we decided that we would go with Warren. And then David Mays came along, and, and they, he, he bought Warren out over a three-year period. So uh, how much more do you pay him when you use that uh, amount, 20%? We pay twenty. We pay 80% uh, less than what the others were. And that's the way it is today? Well, yeah, it's probably 78%. We're paying... Uh, 12 basis points for their service. It, 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 there's nobody else does it that cheap. Mm -hmm. The cheapest we bid, I think, it was 40, 40 percent of uh, 40 basis points plus. Uh, we'd have to hire some of, uh, for outside accounting. Yeah, we're going to have some more questions here. And the, the, the reason the reason it's cheap is because Warren lives in the town, and he feels that it's his civic duty to do this for the for the uh, town. <coughs> And, and if you go way back to when Warren ran for the trustees, he ran five times and lost uh, because the people who were on the trustees were very popular um, in, in town, and it was hard to uh, break into that. They only had three then. But when they increased it to five, then Warren got appointed for one of those posts. I and remember. I was here. I supported Warren. Yeah. And, and he did a good job then. And, and this advertising thing is completely separate from the conflict of interest issue that was going back in 2011. Mm -hmm. This is a new These issue. These are the questions that I didn't know the answer to after I had first heard about this. And, you know, I, I mean, I've just thought, well, people are confusing or whatever. But so we're just here gathering this information. And really, it's like everything else that happens in, Ham happens in Hampton. You know, let I, it's, it will be up to the voters to, uh, you know, how they feel about what they, what they hear about the information that's gathered. But I think that's the biggest thing that you have to look at is what is best for the voters and how are they going to look at it because that they're a big part of what happens here and what they'll decide to do. Mr. And Bridal. The only comment I got to make is, is you're right, uh, what, what Jim had to say is that you guys should have been known and it seems that maybe this Dave Mays person has, has done you a pretty good job. But he's been there longer than 2012. He's been, there, as you have said, he's been there since 2008. This is all stuff he should have known about. And with it coming up, shame on him for not telling you guys. 
Shame on him for not keeping you guys informed. Because he should have. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Yeah, just one quick. I have no idea how the SEC works. But if they were investigating this for three years, are they under any obligation to, to notify anyone? I don't know how the government works. Not until it's final. I'm sorry? Not till it's final. Not till it's final. Okay. Because I didn't learn about this till I got my packet a week ago today. I, I didn't even hear well, a no rumor. one on the board. The rest of us. Right. No, for sure. They, right. didn't, they didn't question or contact any of you? No, of course not. No? Mm -hmm. That's pretty strange to me, but... Well, SEC audits, they're standard in the industry, you know, so okay. that they do periodically. And again, most of the time audits go fine. Uh, actually, a lot of managers don't mind them because of the... the uh, it's a way of finding out. Well, okay, when we we not, we're missing to do, getting to do something, you know, and mo most of the time, that it doesn't result in any fines, you know. But yeah, the audits overall generally don't only last a few days, and then it's okay. from the findings they take it from there. But while they won't notify or when what comes on, again, they did mandate that Warren notify all his clients of the and put it on the SEC order on his website as well, so people will have. So will this see. is kind of an outlier, hmm? a strange situation, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, thank you. Do you have further comments, um, Mr. Bean? I'm just waiting for what the Attorney General has. It's, uh, as I said, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. This is above all of our pay grades, and yeah. it's up in Congress. Thank you. I just want one more thing. I just, I don't care how good the deal is somebody makes with me. I'm not doing business unless they're 100% honest, unless they're 100% up front. I can go to buy a car and somebody can give me a great deal, and they're not honest, I'm not dealing. Amen. And I think that's something we really, really have to look at. Why weren't you informed? What's the honesty here? Great deal. Would down the road, would there be something else? That's my only statement. Um, and I just would like to say that, you know, I urge you again to put your uh, minutes on the meeting. When I, your minutes on the uh, town website. Um, the, when I did look up, and you can find it pretty quickly, I was trying to get in touch with Mr. Falzone and then I realized I, 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 what I was looking for, I realized it wasn't even your name that I was, you weren't the person I was looking for after I saw the spelling of your name. So, uh, no, we appreciate everything that you do. And what, do you have, gentlemen have any more comments? Well, we, I will say this, we, we will take your uh, suggestion about making it easier to have the minutes on the town's website. Uh, <coughs> into consideration at our, at our next meeting in January. We also have in our agenda, because I've sent out the criteria, that we're going to have more of a formal review of Mackinson and Company, part of our, we, ha we haven't gone out for bid for a number of years and just want to have that discussion, and that's on our agenda as well. So in a way, we are hearing what you have to say. We're also uh, reconsidering uh, we, uh, any any time we want, we can reconsider the issue, but we are having it on our agenda. But well, we appreciate what it. What meeting did you say, Norm? The uh, January 21st, I believe, our next meeting. That yeah, sounds right. And we saw that uh, uh, in doing some <coughs> research, we noticed that you can reconsider any time you feel fit yeah. to do that. So thank you for coming in tonight. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Next.